Just another beautiful January day all across the Dakotas and Minnesota as many areas were breaking record highs today. Around the Twin Cities area, Minneapolis had a high of 55, a breaks a record of 46 set back in 1995. St. Cloud also 55 with the old record of 46. Eau Claire, Wisconsin, a high of 52 and breaks the old record of 47. Across eastern North Dakota, both Grand Forks and Fargo set new high records for today with Hector reaching 52 degrees, breaking the old record of 44. Grand Forks at around 49, 51 degrees, just depends on where you look. But either way, that was a record that was broken from back in 2009 as well. And if we take a look at the satellite out on the Pacific coast, we've got a very strong jet slamming on and coming, coming up and over the top here. That's allowing these warm temperatures to move and slide into our area and giving us those record breaking high temperatures and pretty warm lows for that matter uh, for this time of year as well. But as I said, we've got this strong jet that's going to be slamming on, bringing on all kinds of precipitation across to California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah. There's going to be some areas down there where we're going to be talking about feet of snow by the time we're all done. And even with the strong jet that's moving on shore, we have such a strong high ridge above us that it's going to take just a little longer before those warm temperatures move out of the way. So we're going to be enjoying these temperatures, at least the above average temperatures for a little while longer and here we see that strong jet moving on that pineapple express really crashing on board but meanwhile we continue to have this ridge over us now we do have a bit of a kink uh, within this ridge where we've got a little bit of a stronger jet that kind of works its way back to the south and west and so i mentioned something in a post earlier about the possibility of some rain and here's kind of where it comes from and because of where this jet stream kind of sets up and how this uh, basically lines up Really, we're looking at the precipitation to be kind of within this region of the Dakotas, really not reaching Minnesota much at all with this particular disturbance. And as we take a look at the temperatures at the low and middle levels, we basically get a sense of how those temperatures remain above average for this time of year. Generally, we see these blues and the purples this time of year, not the case at this point. But as this system, as this little jet kind of breaks off and pushes back to the uh, north and west, you can see how some of these uh, cooler temperatures kind of form and branch off and break off and also move off to the northwest with it. And so as we go into Saturday, as some of that precipitation moves into particularly, I think, southwestern parts of South Dakota, that might be what brings at least the possibility of some snow or that mix of rain snow across parts of our region. So here's how things are looking for this weekend at this moment. We're looking at the rain possibly moving into southwestern parts of South Dakota by Saturday morning, somewhere around 6 a.m. or so. So it's going to be a little earlier for some of you across western parts of South Dakota. And we see a little more moisture begin to work its way in once we get into the afternoon hours. This is around 3 p.m. And here you're starting to notice, especially across the higher elevations of the Black Hills, where some of that rain could turn over to snow. Now, once we get a little bit later into the evening and into the overnight hours, a little more rain continues. But again, we continue to watch that snow across the higher elevations of the Black Hills. Might get a little reprieve perhaps as we get into Sunday morning and then a little more rain kind of branches off and moves off to the northwest throughout the day on Sunday and into Sunday evening. And once we get into early Monday, it looks like most of that rain will have basically cut, been cut off and moved off to the Northwest and the rest of the moisture basically left down to the Southern parts of the United States. Now by Monday morning, notice we still kind of have that ridge over our area. So most areas will remain at least above average. We're not going to be seeing those record temperatures by any means, but still above average for this time of year. However, as we go a little bit later in the day, we do see this weak little disturbance that moves off to the north and east. And that could potentially bring just a little bit of rain or snow or a mix as we move into northwestern and north central parts of North Dakota on the day on Monday. You can see here, at least on the European model, as we go throughout to the western parts of North Dakota, north central parts of the north. 
you can see here on the European model how that precipitation moves from Western North Dakota up into North Central parts of North Dakota before it moves on out of the region. So be mindful, particularly across Western North Dakota on Monday, they got the possibility of seeing some snow as you go throughout the day. As we continue through the week, we still have this strong jet down here that continues to deepen this ridge and push this eastward throughout the week. And basically what we're going to be looking at as we get a little bit later in the week, we can see how that trough basically moves eastward. And we've got the potential at least of some energy breaking off and moving into our region as we get a bit, little bit later on. Obviously we're talking out there quite a ways. We're over a week away from that. This is Wednesday going into Thursday and on into Friday. You can see how the European model handles that one. In the American model, about the same time frame, Wednesday going into Thursday and on into Friday. This one a little more robust, of course, though that's very typical for the American GFS model. Typically, it does overdo those systems that far out. I'm actually a little amazed that they actually agree that well this far out, given that complexity, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see how this develops as we get closer to next week. But with this first system, it's not like we're looking at a bunch of rain for our area. The best chance is going to be across south and western parts of South Dakota, where maybe you might pick up a half inch of rain by the time this is all done. The other question will be how much snow will accumulate, particularly across the higher elevations of the Black Hills, where I think they've got the potential at least of seeing a four inches or more in some locations. Now for your high temperatures throughout the remainder of the week, as we look at Thursday, we're looking at those high temperatures right around the freezing mark up in the northeastern parts of Minnesota. And as you get to the west, we're looking at the mid 50 still across parts of the Dakotas. Friday, fairly similar as again, we're looking close to freezing, maybe not quite as you get into the uh, upper Arrowhead region, a little bit cooler out in the west, but still not too bad as we're taking a look at those highs in the upper 40s to low 50s. Saturday, not too shabby all around, even with some of that rain out here in the south and west. Most everybody's going to be in the 30s and 40s, probably a little cooler though, obviously, as we do get into those higher elevations of the Black Hills. Sunday looking fairly similar to Saturday, 30s to 40s, maybe near 50 in some locations of South Dakota. Monday, we're on repeat as we have the mid 30s to the north and east to around 50 in the south and west. And that continues on into Tuesday, but you do notice a little bit of a slide here beginning to happen across Montana, where we're eventually going to be looking at those cooler temperatures making their way across our region as we get later into next week. In fact, if we go back and take a look at those temperatures at the low and mid levels again, you can see how some of these colder temperatures are starting to stag just a little bit further south than what they were before. And then as we get deeper into next week, they begin to plunge back down into our region. And it looks like we're going to be in for a bit of a cool down once we get later into next week. So still not too shabby, but you can see how that large jet that's crashing on shore across the southwest is really going to mess things up eventually and make a bit of a shift in our pattern going to make it a little more active for our region. It's been really, really quiet. I think it's been nice. Maybe not so much for you snow lovers out there, but it looks like there's at least some potential of some change along the way. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how that develops. All right, everybody, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe down below, hit the bell button so that you know I've uploaded a video just like this. At the very least, just hit the thumbs up button. That helps me out and lets other people know that you appreciated this video and maybe they'll find it as well. All right, so for Region Weather Live, I'm meteorologist Brad Warner and everybody have a good day.